Ask master if it's you bid me to come and you know the story and Jesus says come and when he jumps on water he walks on the water for a little bit and began to doubt there's two types of doubt in this story the first one is the doubt that we see of them not being sure it was Jesus because there are times that we go through circumstances and situations that we're not quite sure that God's with us sometimes it's not what we go through that really troubles us is the idea that we begin to doubt if God is with us or not is God in this or is God not in this it's uh, is this is this my own doing or God is just trying to bring glory out of this story <laughs> so Jesus for this first type of doubt Jesus assures them of his presence and says be not afraid it is I then that's when Peter said can I come and just Jesus says come and then we see the second doubt this is the second kind of doubt he began to focus on the wind not on the word so he's assured of the presence of Jesus but now the wind is overwhelming the word hmm. the second doubt is when the wind begins to overwhelm the word that God has given you yes you know God has given you a word but the wind is boisterous <laughs> yes you know God gave you the word to go forward but the wind is boisterous yes you know that the Lord told you do this I'm with you but the wind seems to overwhelm the word so Peter acted on the word <laughs> but the wind is suppressing the wind is boisterous the second kind of doubt is when we are acting on the word but the wind is boisterous he has a word from God but the wind became stronger than the word the second kind of doubt is when the wind becomes stronger than the word oh because the wind always wants to overpower the word the wind always wants to overwhelm to suppress <laughs> the word my goodness so he became afraid so he became afraid and whatever and let me tell you this whatever you focus on the most whatever you put your attention on the most whatever you put your attention on the most is what dominates you whether it's the wind or the word <laughs> whether it's the wind or the word so you have got to focus to keep your eyes on Christ at this moment you have got to focus on the word not on the wind because both the wind and the word are real <laughs> my goodness so the one that you focus your attention the most is the most real to you if you are focusing if your focus is on the wind the word is not it's not going to be that real to you all that's going to be real to you is the wind, the wind, the wind. But when you focus on the word, the wind becomes nothing at the presence of God. <laughs> My goodness. So you've got to focus on the word, not on the wind. Don't stop paying attention to the wind. Stop looking at what's happening around you. Stop looking at the storm because you have something stronger. You have something greater than the storm. You have the word my God they had the word of God himself which is Christ with them and no other wind nothing else matters when you have the word the wind does not matter it will blow but the word will always overcome we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony whatever is born of God whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and that is the victory that overcomes even our faith in God my goodness and interesting that those who didn't uh, and they were all in the boat and everybody was in the boat and Peter said bid me to come master and Jesus said come and he got up and walked. interesting watch this those who didn't take a leap of faith that Peter took in the first place did not have to experience the failure he experienced because he walked on water Peter walks on water and when Jesus said come he takes the leap he walks he began to walk on water 
And at some point he began to doubt, so he began to sink. So he looked like he initially succeeded walking on water, but at some point he began to fail, he began to sink. Now you must pay attention to this. Those who didn't take a leap of faith that Peter took in the first place did not have to experience the failure that he experienced. My goodness. They didn't, interesting, they did not experience both the success and the failure that he experienced. They didn't learn what he learned. They did not, they did not, they didn't get empowered like he got. They didn't learn through the experience like he did. They didn't get the, the correction that Peter got. They didn't get the guidance. <laughs> they did not get the help that he got because they didn't take the leap of faith that he took. Not everyone has been where you've been. And don't expect everyone to be like you because you're not like everyone else. Peter eventually cried out to Jesus and Jesus held his hand. Jesus took his, him by the hand. God is taking you by the hand and you are not alone in this walk. And when guess what? When Peter got back to the boat, he didn't come back alone. He came back with Jesus. He came back empowered. Everyone who didn't take, anyone who didn't take the leap of faith has missed the lesson that Peter learned. Anyone who didn't take the walk of faith has missed the empowerment that Peter got. There are some storms. There are some storms that will break out because of some decisions you've made to go forward. It's not because of anything else. It's because you made the decision to go forward that the storm breaks out. And don't worry, they're just the labor pains. <laughs> because you're about to give birth to something different. You're about to give birth to something new. You're about to give birth to something greater. Greater than you've ever seen. And anyone who didn't go on that journey with you won't experience, will not experience what you experience. And won't learn what you learn. You might have been in the same boat with them all your life. Same family, same job, same situation with the rest. Peter was in the same boat with everyone. Uh, same circumstances, same community. But you are going to have at some point to take a leap of faith. You're going to have to take a leap of faith sometimes that people won't follow. And you're going to have to go alone. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the same community, same friends, you grew up in the same home, in the same environment. This is your walk of faith, not theirs. Uh, my God. When Peter got out, nobody came with him my god but he kept his focus and he walked on water walking towards jesus <laughs> my god this faith walk is a walk towards destiny it's not a an aimless walk of faith it's a walk of faith towards jesus Oh God, this is a walk of faith towards your purpose in God. This is a walk of faith that is targeted towards your purpose in God. Don't look back. This is the moment. This is the time. You might have been in the same boat and nobody else followed you. Keep walking. Oh yes, you might have been crit criticized. Keep walking. Uh, they might have talked about you and gossiped about you. Uh, who, who does he think he is? Uh, but keep walking. Uh, I don't doubt that people spoke about Peter and wondered, who does he think he is? The, is he the only one here? Does he, who does he really think he is after all? Uh, but keep walking. Uh, there is something for you in that walk. Uh, if you don't stop walking, uh, keep walking, keep going forward because victory is waiting for you on this street. I mean, Jesus was walking on water. There was something that, oh my God, that Peter saw it and something in him connected to that. My God, it was instantaneous. It was spontaneous. Peter did not need to ask around, what do you guys think? Do you guys want to come? And look around asking people. He just asked the Lord, is that you? If it's you, bid me to come. Immediately he jumped and he went. My God.
When it comes to a walk of destiny, when it comes to a walk of faith that is destiny related, you don't have time to ask questions around. You don't care if anybody else is coming. You don't care if anyone else is doing it. You don't even care what people think of you. My God, because something in you connects so deep to it, my God, you don't care who approves and who doesn't approve of it. Yes, that's how to know a walk of destiny. You don't care what people think. You don't care who thinks you're right or wrong. You don't care who agrees, approves or doesn't approve. It's a walk, my God, of destiny. It's a walk of destiny. Yes, that is going to change your life. That's why when God called you out of what he called you out of, you're something in you jumped to to it my god something in you deeply connected to it and you feel yes this is the direction that i should be going and that's why something in you connected to it you felt this is god's purpose and plan for my life my goodness you are in a walk that is going to change your life this is the moment you've been waiting for go forward and you notice jesus never asked them to come he was just walking on water he was just walking on water he never asked anybody to come but when peter said master is that you if it's you bid me to come he said yes <laughs> because god is always looking for whoever has faith the size of a mustard seed hmm. he was looking for whoever had a little faith as a mustard seed and he was going to meet the person halfway oh god you might not have all the faith to last you through the journey but if you have faith to begin get started right now you don't have to have all the faith to last you the journey just all you need is faith to begin he always grabs you by the hand he will always pick you up and meet you halfway doesn't the bible say is the author and the finisher of our faith glory to god he's the one that bid you to come my goodness for he has dealt unto every one of us the measure of faith let's take that as the beginning of of the walk of faith but it's not only the alpha he is the omega the beginning and the end the author and the finisher so he would help you perfect things as you go forward it may all look stormy and skeletal right now is going to help you perfect it as you go forward don't wait anymore don't wait any longer this is the time this is the moment so when jesus was walking on water it's like if god putting if jesus was putting it on display whoever wants to come god has put his his, his goodness on display for everyone but not everyone takes it. Some people won't take it, but some people would. <laughs> uh, make sure you take advantage of God's goodness. Make sure you take advantage of this window of opportunity. Make sure you take advantage of what God is putting on display right now. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. God is putting something on display for you right now. This is the moment to jump right in. And when they got back to the boat, guess what is all the friends of Peter said? They said to Jesus, oh, you are indeed the son of God. Wow. The acknowledgement came after the whole trip. The acknowledgement came at the end of the storm, not at the beginning. If you're waiting for people to acknowledge you, you're going to wait for a long time. But take that walk of faith. God is right by you. He would never leave nor forsake you.